Welcome to our fourth research lesson. I'm glad you joined. Today we are going to discuss about variables and also types of variables. But before we jump into the objectives of today, let's have a recap of what we discussed in our previous lesson. In our previous lesson, we discussed about concepts and constructs. Here we said concepts. These are things which are conceived in the mind or they are just the building blocks of our thoughts. We also talked about constructs where we said that constructs are developed from concepts, that when a concept is deliberately adopted for a special purpose, then it is going to become a construct. And today we are going to look at our third element, which is variables. So now what is a variable? By definition, a variable is a measurable characteristic which assumes different values among subjects or objects, meaning they have at least two values. The key word in this definition is variation. Therefore, a variable must vary within a class of objects that the researcher manipulates, controls, and observes. In simple terms, variables vary. Please note that variables are created by measuring constructs. That means when you create your constructs and you put them in a measurable form, they automatically become variables. A variable has three characteristics. Number one, it is observable. The second characteristic is it varies. That means it must have at least two values in a class of objects or subjects. Characteristic number three, it is measurable, meaning we can assign a number to it. So from the above characteristics, when we want to talk about examples of variables, we can have marital status, we can have income level, we can have gender. Now, for example, when we say gender, it has two values. Someone can either be male or can be female. So it has more than one value. But remember, Individual members in a class of subjects must differ or vary in order to be called a variable because if all members are identical, the class is going to be referred to as a constant. For example, assume you are in a class where there are both males and females. In that case, gender is a variable, isn't it? Because we have said that a class is having both females and males, which means it valids it is measurable and it is observable, which means it is a variable. But using the same example, if the class only has females or it has only males or maybe it is a single school, then gender is not going to be a variable. But in this case, gender is going to be called a constant. Why? Because all members are either males or females, isn't it? Let's use another example. If all members in a setting are married, then marital status isn't a variable. But if the same setting, you have some who are single, you have some who are divorced, then marital status is a variable because it assumes different values, isn't it? So those are the variables. The observable varies and measurable. If all members are identical, then the class is a constant, isn't it? I think now we have an overview of what a variable is. Now let's look at our second objective, where we are supposed to understand the types of variables. We shall start with independent and dependent variables. Now let's start with independent variables. By definition, an independent variable is one that the researcher makes changes in or manipulates in order to determine its effects or influence on the dependent variable. It therefore means an independent variable is like the cause, so that we can see an effect on the dependent variable. Therefore, an independent variable is manipulated to produce different levels of values, and the researcher is going to observe how these changes that have been made are going to affect the dependent variable. For example, if a researcher is studying about effects of caffeine on alertness, caffeine would be the independent variable. The researcher will then manipulate the levels of caffeine 
such as giving participants different doses of caffeine and observes the effect on the dependent variable, which in this case would be alertness. So as you have seen again, independent variable is the cause, while dependent variable is the effect. So in these topics, I would like you to identify independent variables before we go to the dependent variables. For example, influence of socioeconomic status on housing conditions. Which one depends on the other? From this statement, we can see that housing conditions are going to depend on the socioeconomic status, which means housing conditions is the dependent variable because it depends on the independent, and the independent is socioeconomic status. For the rest of the topics, please, you can identify the independent variables. Now let's first look on the dependent variables. A dependent variable by definition is a variable which is expected to change as a result of the presence, absence, or magnitude of the independent variable. It is therefore means that it is the factor the researcher measures to observe the effect on the independent variable. Using the same example, effects of caffeine on alertness. Alertness will be the dependent variable. Remember we said caffeine is the independent variable. So now, since we have realized that a dependent variable is a variable that is expected to change, it means the alertness is the one which is expected to change and it is the one we are going to be measuring. So it is the effect. Therefore, alertness will be the dependent variable because alertness depends on how much caffeine is taken. It depends on the independent. Alertness depends on caffeine. Therefore, dependent is always going to depend on the independent. In simple terms, dependent variable is like a parasite while independent variable is the host. Using another example, influence of socioeconomic status on housing conditions. We already talked about it that socioeconomic status is the independent variable while housing conditions is the dependent variable because housing conditions depends or is influenced by the socioeconomic status. Socioeconomic status determines where you live, isn't it? Also note that the two that is the independent variable and the dependent variable go hand in hand because the dependent variable can only change when an independent variable is manipulated. So a change in independent variable brings a change in dependent variable. So would you identify independent variables and dependent variables in these examples? Let's tackle number two whereby it says influence of community participation on sustainability of faith-based organizations. From this example, we see that community participation is the independent variable, while sustainability of faith-based organizations is the dependent variable. Why? Because the sustainability of faith-based organization always depends on the community participation. Community participation is the cause, while sustainability or faith-based organization is the effect, isn't it? So please identify the DLV and the IV in the rest of the example. So that was type number one. I hope you have gotten an overview. In case you have any question, please put it in the comment section. I will make sure I reply to it. Type number two is confounding variables. By definition, a confounding variable is a variable that can influence the dependent variable. In simple terms, it means it can affect the validity of findings. Because we already know that there is always a primary relationship between an independent and the dependent variable. So in case any other variable comes in between and confuses this relationship such that the change in the dependent variable cannot be fully attributed to the independent variable, then that variable is called a confounding variable. For example, we want that the results we obtained from the participants about their alertness should only be attributed to caffeine. 
but we might have other variables which can come in between caffeine and alertness and affect our findings. For example, time of the day can be a confounding variable since in the morning participants might be more naturally alert than in the evening which could affect our results. To better understand a confounding variable, we are going to have two types of confounding variable. That is intervening variables and extraneous variables. Now let's talk about intervening variables. Intervening variables are going to affect our phenomenon, but we cannot observe or see them or measure them in an experimental setting. Intervening variables are hypothetical constructs like personality, intelligence, or attitude. They are not real variables because they can't be measured, isn't it? Because we already saw the characteristics of a variable. It is therefore impossible to quantify how much of the experimental results are due to the IV and how much are due to each of the intervening. Now let's look at this example to better understand intervening variables. Our topic is teaching and learning facilities on performance of students. We said an intervening variable cannot be observed, seen, or measured in an experimental setting, but it is going to have effect on our findings. Now, in this example, we can have intelligence as an intervening variable because intelligence contributes to the performance, yet we may not be able to measure how much performance is influenced by their intelligence. Now we have another type under confounding variables which are extraneous variables. And these are independent variables that are not related to the purpose of study but may affect the dependent variable. Therefore, if they are not controlled, they can affect the observed changes on the, on the dependent variable. Therefore, they need to be controlled. Also note that if they cannot be controlled, they should be put into consideration when interpreting results. Now let's use this example to understand extraneous variables. In a study where you want to find out the influence of teaching and learning facilities on performance, remember we said an extraneous variable is not related to the purpose of study. So in this topic of ours, Extraneous variables can include socioeconomic status, teacher qualification. Those ones are not purposes of study, but they can influence or have effect on our research. For example, if the study is in a school where students are coming from different socioeconomic status, as a researcher, you must realize that socioeconomic status would influence performance. And remember, we also said that these extraneous variables are supposed or need to be controlled. So you would limit yourself by using students who are from the same socioeconomic status. That means you have neutralized the influence of socioeconomic status, which is the IV. And whenever these extraneous variables have been neutralized, we refer them to as control variables. Now let's look at our last type which is the moderating variable. That is type number three. By definition, a moderating variable is a second independent variable that has been selected for study in order to determine if it affects or modifies the basic relationship between the primary IV and the primary because remember in a relationship there is at least one IV and DV. Remember we say these always go hand in hand. So whenever you're creating utopia, it must have at least one IV and at least one DV. Now for moderating variables, these can come in and strengthen, reduce, or alter the association between this IV and this DV. In other words, they can make this relationship stronger, weaker, or even disappear and unlike intervening variables these moderating ones are measured and taken into consideration using the same example our topic is teaching and learning facilities on performance of students in this relationship 
teaching and learning facilities influence performing. We have seen this is the relationship between the IV and the DIV. But however, without presence of qualified teachers, even with good facilities, performance will be affected. Therefore, teacher qualification is a moderating variable. It will influence or determine performance whether or not we have good teaching facilities or not. Uh, from the topic we have used, which is the influence of teaching and learning facilities on the performance of students, we have seen that the IV is teaching and learning facilities. We see that the DV is the performance of students. Then an intervening variable can be intelligence. Then an extraneous variable can be a socioeconomic status. Then a moderating variable is teacher qualification. When we use our example of the effect of caffeine on alertness, we realize that caffeine is the IV, then alertness is the DV, then history of taking caffeine. If your participants, some of them have taken caffeine before, that is going to be an intervening variable, then an extraneous variable can be time of the day, then a moderating variable can be the amount of caffeine you are using, isn't it? So with those examples and what we have covered today, we have talked about the types of variables. Let's meet again with another 